Dr. Shiner, you've been a critic of some of the uh, legislative options that are pending. And as I said, I've heard it from all sorts of people. What about dental care? What about the middle class? What about a guarantee of abortion services as emergency necessary um, procedures to be covered under the public option plan? There are a lot of people with complaints about what's come out of the legislature. What are your complaints? And are there any positives to the plans that are being considered right now? Well, as I said, the first thing is uh, since uh, uh, most of the health care will be through private uh, uh, insurance companies, uh, that in itself, uh, to me, uh, means it's going to be a failure because we'll still continue to have that uh, $350 to $400 billion overhead at the very least, which is the cost of uh, doing this. And each office, my private practice, 30% of our costs go to the, the private health insurance. Another thing, he wants to strike, enlarge Medicaid. Well, I don't know how he's going to do this. The states can't pay for Medicaid now. In Illinois, it's six to eight months before you get paid for Medicaid, and you get paid 23 cents on the dollar. Nobody's going to take Medicaid. And the other thing is Medicaid provides, uh, makes the patients on it uh, third-class citizens. Nobody wants them. Oh, Medicaid patient, get out of my office. Medicaid has to go. If we had universal Medicare, that would be much easier. The pharmaceutical companies, we haven't even mentioned them. Uh, through a single payer, you could have bulk purchasing, and you could have negotiate the kinds of fees that you, uh, sp- uh, you know, pay for these pharmaceuticals. In Part D, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical companies, you know, made out like bandits. In fact, many of the, uh, the, pharmaceut- uh, the uh, health insurance companies love mandates because look at all the business they're going to get. This could be a tremendous boon for them. You've been shaking your head, Bob. Well, the the current system is such a disaster. We have to make progress. We have to make real progress. We have to make it this year. If we can't get 676, uh, a majority vote for that, the, then... The single payer, Kanye Single so. payer. Then what we have to do is the Kucinich option, which is single payer allowance for the states. Allow states like California, where the legislature has already adopted single payer in California, although the governor vetoed it. But allow states that want to move ahead with single payer, maybe in Illinois, maybe in New York, to move ahead without the restrictions that currently exist. So that's there's, that's where the compromise has to be. Now, not to be a negativist, um, Congressman, but there are people who say, have a vote on single payer, go ahead, it'll fail, and then you're never going to see another vote ever again, and yet more fuel to the fire of those who say, this isn't an option, it shouldn't be, let's not even spend time talking about it. Well, let's do first things first. It's been a grand total of less than a week that we've even known we're going to have the first vote on single payer on the floor since Medicare was adopted 44 years ago. You know, I would consider that a compelling argument. You know, why have a symbolic loss? A couple of things. One, there is no proposal that's out there right now that has a majority support in Congress. So we're just as much as play as President Obama's play. I don't think there's anyone I've spoken to who believes we have the vote in Congress right now for the Obama plan. We're in the process of trying to sell. And if you look at the imperatives that are being set up, make it simple, make it so people understand and get them comfortable with the idea of a public plan. I think the idea of Medicare for everyone is something that people get. You go up to someone who's 55 years old and he says, sir, we're going to give you Medicare immediately. They're going to like that. You go up to someone who's 45, you say the same thing, they're going to get it. Now, Medicare has its problems and has its gaps, but they at least will be in a position to fix it. So as far as whether or not there's a value to the vote, no, there's not a value to the vote in the abstract. There is a value to us now having an opportunity for the next month to make our plan an alternative to the one that's, that, that, that is, is being considered. And I think a lot of the critique of the plan that, that President Obama and some in Congress have come up with plays into our hands. I mean, let's, 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 give, let's, let's give it a shot. And I think that it's not like we're getting in the way of reform. We're moving towards the direction we want to go. Well, let's hear from one of those critics. Here is um, John Thune from um, North Dakota in the GOP weekly address of a few weeks back. Take a look. Once implemented, the Democrat plan would spend more than $2 trillion and further increase our exploding deficit. Their plan would pile up higher costs, create new Washington bureaucracies, and burden every state through new requirements on Medicaid. Governors and state legislators from both parties have said that increased Medicaid costs would overwhelm their already strained state budgets. In fact, one Democratic governor last week called the increases proposed by congressional Democrats the mother of all unfunded mandates. Quick response, Congressman. Well, frankly, we're already paying an enormous amount in unfunded mandates. $230 billion each year paid out of our own pockets. $3 $3 billion in my city alone each and every year to cover the, the uninsured and the underinsured. These are raising our taxes. If we have a true national health care plan with a single payer, that $600 billion of money that we're putting into the pockets of insurance companies 
You can go to providing health care and lowering taxes in places like South Dakota. Dr. Shina, how are you going to be spending your August? Co Congress is on recess. People are, are back in their offices, maybe on vacation some, but they may be reachable some. Will you be trying to reach out to folks this month? An island in Maine, but I will be available for certain things by cell phone. But every single uh, call that I get that asks me to speak on it, every single one, and I must say, many of them, believe it or not, in fact, most of them have been from Fox, various branches of Fox. Unbelievable. But I, and Fox knows where I stand, and yet Fox has allowed me, you know, to speak, which is, I think, to their credit. Uh, they, they may be using me because I'm against his plan, and anything that's against Obama is, you know, good for Fox. Are you worried about that? No, because I'm allowed, it allows me to get the message across. You know, and the message is people don't understand. They don't even know what single payer is most of the time. They have been given these lies about how the government is going to get in your way. And I'm just trying to explain in very simple terms. I'm not a policy wonk. I mean, you know, my credibility really is the 50 years I've been in medicine. And, you know, I think in very simple terms to tell them that this is a lie. Look what the insurance companies have done to you. How can you possibly say that the government will ruin your health care when the private insurance companies are already doing it. What happened Most when you were, um, a, you were almost scheduled to make an appearance on, a, I think it was ABC Network News, what happened? Well, you know, uh, it was right up to, they thought this would be a, uh, you know, when he had that fo a town hall thing with people asking questions from the uh, uh, audience, including the man who makes $18.6 at Aetna. Uh, and I was two days before I got an email confirming that this was going to be set up. They thought it would be sort of dramatic to have the president's former doctor stand up and ask him a question. And it would have been. It would have been sort of interesting because I haven't seen him in a while. And uh, then uh, the next day, uh, Monday before the Wednesday, another producer called from ABC and said they had too many people there. And so they canceled my appointment, uh, my visit. They didn't need me anymore. Where that came from, it's, it, you know, who knows? It could have come from ABC not wanting uh, a question that they thought might embarrass the president or, you know, possibly somebody who knows. else. Bob, last word from you. There's a month for people to organize what to do. Quickly, 30 seconds. We're, the right-wingers are organizing events in front of every congressman's office on Saturday, August 22nd. They're calling it uh, recessrally.com. So we're going to get single-payer advocates and public advocates option advocates together to rally in support of health care now visit democracy.us final word from you congressman Ten well seconds. this is the time look uh, president obama if you go to the white house website doesn't have his own plan so they're looking for leadership from the grassroots we're going to provide it all right thank you everybody for a great conversation